Hello and welcome to this lesson which is going to be looking at writer's techniques again and today it's going to be looking at use of dialogue tags. In the lesson it would be really useful if you have begun by reading chapter 9 of Heroes and after that point the lesson itself will do a couple of things. It will start with a five a day, then there will be a continuation writing task where the focus will be dialogue tags and how to use those to improve your own writing. Hope you enjoy. The objective of this lesson is to be able to deliberately use fragments and dialogue tags in your own writing. That's taking some of your learning from last lesson and today's lesson and applying it to something of your own. The outcomes, of, as we've already mentioned, are a five a day and a continuation writing task. The five a day is here. So this is the point where you need to pause and complete those in your book or on your Google document. And presuming at that point you've completed the five a day, let's just have a quick look at number four. Go 369 on the quote, let two more summers wither in their pride, oh, we may think her ripe to be a bride. There's a reminder of the things that we can talk about when we go 369. Go 369 is referring to the fact that there are three assessment objectives and the quality of your depth of your answer sometimes uh, can be improved by thinking about it in those terms, thinking not just what can I say about AO1, but also AO2 and AO3, and being aware that you can sometimes <clears throat> say several things for one AO, and that uh, demonstrates a deeper understanding. So let's have a look at AO1. Who says that? That is Lord Capulet. Uh, he says that early on in the play act one, scene two, when he is talking to Paris about Juliet. What does it show about him? Well, at this point, it seems to suggest that he's a caring father. Um, he's showing some concern that she's perhaps not ready to be married yet. Those are pretty straightforward AO1 things, but if we look further down there and we talk about the other events and other quotes, that's where we can say some really clever and interesting things because there's a real contrast between that and some of his behaviour towards her later on, especially in Act 4, where he's he rages at her for her disobedience and he says, out on her hilding, and he descends into rage when she has seemed to be disobedient. For AO2... <clears throat> the word that a lot of people would focus on there would be ripe. Ripe has connotations of fruit, of something to be consumed. Um, and it could be said here that his language reflects something of the way he thinks about her. He commodifies her. That is, he treats her as a commodity, a thing, an object, rather than a person. Now, it should be careful about going too far down that line, or certainly I would. However, there's something in that language there that suggests that he views her in that way. In terms of context or big ideas and themes here, I think definitely it's could say, we could say that it shows Shakespeare is presenting Capulet at this point as a caring father. In terms of themes, obviously we've got things like the theme of love. You know, what is love? There are different modes of love in this play. Uh, and also uh, some of the ideas relating to family, family loyalty, and the big one, which is patriarchy. They live in a patriarchal society where, uh, as patriarchy says, you know, patriarchy is the law of the father. What Capulet ultimately says goes, because he is the male head of the household. So there's a lot we can talk about there. And in terms of, t uh, of key quotes for us to know uh, from the play, that's a really good quote. Okay, with that done, let's move on and let's have a look at chapter nine. I'm presuming that you've read that in advance. <clears throat> a quick summary. Francis, in this chapter, recalls the day Larry LaSalle decided to enlist to fight in World War II. Then he gives us an account of the relationship with Nicole, which seems to be growing, and he takes her to the Plymouth Cinema on Saturdays. There, they see Larry in a newsreel, um, and Larry LaSalle has received a Silver Star medal for his heroic actions, and he's featured in the newsreel. Now, a newsreel is something interesting and something of the past. If you're not familiar with it, a newsreel was something that would be shown as a, a cinema as a form of visual news reporting. So rather like we watch the TV news, or a lot of us now watch video news and, and information online, 
If we go back to 1941, a lot of news was disseminated in different ways. It came through the print media, so through newspapers. It came through the radio. And in visual terms, uh, newsreels were something that people would see and uh, they were used quite broadly. So before we go on to um, in any further, I'm going to show you a quick example of some newsreel footage, uh, very similar to the sort of thing that's being talked about here. America goes to war. Men of the Army, Navy and Marines reinforce the battlefronts on six continents to save the homes and ideals of free men from Axis domination. In Ireland, United States fighting men who have safely crossed the submarine-infested Atlantic strengthen their ever-increasing ranks. Yanks on the march on Irish South. The worldwide conflict brings intrepid American airmen to China's heroic fighting front. So let's move on and let's have um, a look at the uh, writing task. Now, the task I've set is for a piece of continuation writing. So let's talk through the task, then let's do a quick model and then set you off with yours. So after a visit to the cinema, uh, Fr Francis and Nicole uh, speak about Larry LaSalle. I've asked you here to complete a piece of continuation writing where I've given you the first sentence and I want you to continue that conversation. But in that, I want you to think about your choices of uh, fragments uh, of dialogue tags, uh, as well as verbs, adverbs, adverbial phrases, the things we've been learning recently. Now, a dialogue tag, in case we're not sure, uh, is that little bit um, of information that comes after a piece of dialogue. So I'll put the model up now, which I've put together. So what do you think Nicole said? Nicole said is the dialogue tag. It gives us information about who said it, how they said it, and so on. And straight away there, I've changed there. Instead of saying Nicole said, I've said Nicole asked, indicating she's asking a question to Francis. Because I think in this scene, there will be a difference. At this point already, Francis will be a bit more sceptical about Larry <clears throat> than Nicole, whose relationship at this point hasn't soured and nothing sinister has happened yet, although it's going to happen. So in response, I've decided that um, Francis is going to reply um, in a, in a non-committal way. And I've actually said here of what replied Francis evasively. It's as if he wants to avoid talking about Larry, because for me, that, that fits with his character at this point. He's far more interested in talking to Nicole and in their relationship than talking about Larry, who is this um, increasingly ambiguous figure, I think, for Francis. So Nicole has, has given a response there saying, of Larry, of course. Now, I've put, not put a dialogue tag on there. And the reason I've done that is because it means there is a bit more pace. We don't always have to say how somebody says something. Sometimes it actually becomes laboured. And in response... I've asked Francis to say, Francis has said, oh, well, he's a hero, I suppose. So we've got a fragment in there. So Francis is going to say that. And in the dialogue tag, I've added some more information. Francis spoke without conviction, um, as if he wanted to be somewhere else, sorry, as if he was thinking uh, something else. So in the dialogue tag, I've actually used a full sentence there. Now, here is the task uh, that I've set for you, uh, the continuation writing there. Now, I've actually given you a couple of options. The first option is the one that I've set, which I'd expect probably most people to have a good go at. If you find that you're maybe uh, struggling with that, or if you've pushed for time uh, and, uh, and it's becoming quite difficult, you can take option two. Option two gives you the dialogue, and I would just ask you to replace the dialogue tags um, or indeed, in some cases, remove them, like we've done in the model there, to try and get a clearer idea of how these characters are talking. Because probably at this point, Nicole is still looking up to Larry, 
whereas Francis is maybe feeling a little bit more ambiguous about him. He's seen hints of something slightly different. Now, in your book, uh, or indeed on your Google Doc for your teacher, we should have the five a day. We should have your continuation writing. And in terms of the amount, I would say 10 minutes of writing is more than enough for this, just enough to show your teacher that you have thought about using those different dialogue tags and you've thought about trying to get in some of those other things we've learned. So the fragments, as well as adverbs and adverbial phrases. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed that lesson. Make sure your work goes into the usual places. Thank you very much.